Das Party Monday Top. Yo, fucking beauty. Let's fucking do this. Yeah, 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 This chap, what a legend. Wait, we just got Hugo photos, I think. Hugo, little buddy, what are you doing? Oh, Hugo and Beans. Having a great time. Oh, little buddies. Yes, welcome friends, welcome indeed to another glorious party Monday. I'm your host, Big Deno. Today we'll be painting some toy soldiers, as is often the case on my stream. Uh, we're sort of pretty happy with this chap. We're probably not going to do too much more to him no. at the moment. Um, at the moment. Yeah, we might do a little spirally pattern down this or something. A little bit more detail. So, yeah, shield came out okay. I think I'll darken up this colour a bit. Um, and then we'll add some scratches. And I just painted a very, very quick wood grain because no one's going to see that shit anyway. So, um, yeah, happy with that. Good figure. Enjoyed, um, enjoyed painting that. Really nice doing uh, doing these types of figures on occasion. Tonight we're going to do this guy. Can I think we're going to do? Yeah, I think we're going to go super warm. Uh, mate, the, the the back part of the tartan doesn't actually. It's not the same, mate. You know. But the tartan generally stops about there. So, you can't have a look at any dude wearing tartan. That's usually what happens. Anybody got time for that? No, we, we may actually go back and do it. Um, just, I've got to see. His placement is very angled such that his stuff sits in. So, I don't know that we will. Alright, here we go. Let's kick on with just... I'm just going to paint this orangey red the whole thing it's going to be wonderful everything everything is going to be orangey red if you're wondering why you're doing that Deno I really cannot give you a strong answer for that at this stage I just feel like doing it. I just feel like going. Orange. I had oh, two bucks it's going on. I had one of my employees come to me today and he said, you know, I read a, read a piece of advice or one of his coaches or someone had said to him, you know, you should always try and be 20% higher energy than the people around you. And he said, do you know how fucking hard that is, Deno? <laughs> 
when I'm around you, motherfucker. <laughs> Yeah, feel your feel your bro. But at the same time, that one's not on me, champ. Bring the heat, son. Bring the heat. Uh, MK Finder. This is actually not a Viking. It is a uh, it is a Gaul. It is Vercingetorix the Gaul. Very similar to Crixus. The Gaul. Alright. I feel we've achieved maximum orangeness now, which is excellent. Honestly, mate, they all feel very similar to me as well. Ancient warrior chap. And we are going to find a way to paint in an interesting way. Here we go. Orange of a single torx. But before we do that, we might give the single torx just a smidge more time to dry. I had a cool idea that I'd like to do. And I'd like to share that cool idea with all of you. It's actually not that cool, but maybe you can help me pick some models to buy. Actually, I will do that later. I'm feeling, I'm feeling the painting energy right now. Feeling the, feeling the majesty. Let's do it. Reddish flesh. Rojo Bejo. Yep, we're gonna we're gonna go crazy on Stainbeard. Jim sent me a message today. Oh, that model you were you wanted is in. I said, Jim, what a wonderful human you are. Actually, we should do it now while Topulus is here. We'll probably lose him soon to the the vagaries of sleep, given that it's probably what two a.m. For you, mate. Yeah, that's manageable. I wouldn't go to bed before that most nights. That's what I'm working on. So, am, am I going to need to? Am I going to need to get into this arcane? Seriously, is this something? Is this something I need to do? Yeah, I sort of did, <laughs> sort of, um, unintentionally, but it happened, so. Alright. Alright, I'll give it a crack. Magnificent logo, yeah, alright, let me just quickly show you this, here we go. Get a roll painting, yeah, so this is, this is the dude, this is the big deno. Here he is. So, we're calling him done for the moment. Going to work on the other guys so we can just have them all side by side and working together. So we're going to work on this chap tonight. But, let's go have a look at Stainbeard. So, Jim said to me, hey Deno, any models you want, let's have a bow peep. And I said, sure mate. Let's have a look. Uh, Shopo. Just go Shopo. Okay. So... I am very partial to these dwarves, but I don't know. Don't know that I want to get any of them just now. 
I came very close to nearly buying that Gul'dan, Pirate Gul'dan, but I didn't. Uh, I do like the dude with the cannon. Good opportunity to do some non-metallic metals. Put that in the maybe pile. Yeah, this dude with the octopus was the one I was really keen on, but... Ooh, Morgana Lefay bus. Get out, Conrad. Um, I've already done Papa Jumbo. Arbel Anatomical. I'm good, thanks. Let's load some more. You know, I was originally doing this uh, load, this road girl. Um, I was going to use her for Dorothy in the uh, in the Wizard of Oz, and I was going to have the bike have the label Toto on the side. Thought that could be quite cool. Didn't end up going that way, but it would have been neat. Um, do do do. Yeah, it would have been good, eh? So I've already done Blood Temple. I don't like her because her arms are too short. Um, these haven't arrived yet, have they? The Kickstarter ones, the Dracos. I don't think they have anyway. Pedro, I've already done that one. Some of those. I've done that. I've done Cursed. Oh, I like that Night Bells. That probably would have been a buy. Uh, shan't be buying a dude with a guitar. Not interested. Thank you. Um, boo, 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 boo. I do like that dude. Big barbarian dude. But Oh, yeah. Here we go. We're going to add Kyle, Heir to the Blue Sun. This figure was done recently by the Grand Maestro Kirill Knave. And I've also seen another version done by an Australian painter called Maka. I think she's a magnificent sculpt, she or he. Up to interpretation, I believe. So, yep, I think we'll, we'll go her. Pim. Uh, no, don't need any of these. I've got them all coming. <coughs> yep, the king. Uh, we're starting to get into the territory that Big Deno is a little bit um, aggressive on, so... Did Narwald, did Finar, did Amitriel, did this 75mm version and the bust, did this one, did this one, did this one, did this one. Uh, I know the Black Crow order is coming in, so I may, I'm getting Octavius already. Curry is not neat, neat little model, isn't she? Mm. I've done Urhuk, I've done the Wraith, I've done Cormac, I've got Snicked, I've done Anor. I do want to get some of these for my um, for my diorama project that I'm working on next. So Zen. Yeah, we might go her and her. Uh, I've got her. I've done her, I've done her, I've done her, I've done the 75 mil of her, I've done her, I haven't done Cozy, I wouldn't mind doing Cozy, uh, I've done that guy, that's actually my version I think, of sticks, looks like my version, yep, um, I've done the Soma Moonray. I like this this chick. She can be in my diorama as well. So can she. Don't like that. So can she. Uh, no. I've done her. I've got her. I've done that. I did that. I did that. I did that. Alright. Well... The only ones that I was not, yeah, I wouldn't mind maybe one of these Mindworks ones. That one's pretty awesome. Oh, that's not even half of it, mate. This dude hasn't got Black Sun. I've got so many fucking painted Black Sun figures. I do love that Morgana paint job by Miguel. I think it was Miguel who did that, wasn't it? Fucking beautiful.
Yeah. Actually, Aroba's latest piece was just clutch. Uh, Alright, no dwarves, no orcs, no more Camelot. A bit done on Camelot for the moment. Don't think I want any of those. I've already got Morrigan sitting over there to do. This samurai girl is pretty awesome, actually. Yeah. I don't know. I'm not a fan. It's very old Rackham-esque style. Yeah. I'm ambivalent. I don't feel like that, that. That's not Masklin's box art, is it? I don't think that's his box art. There's no no monks, mate, because no monks are the shittest. I'm dead set going to do a diorama with all of these sci fi chicks. That is just a bit excessive, don't know, isn't it? Yes, but we love it. So I think we might just add Kyle for the moment. Uh, yeah. Yes, indeed, I will be including the new one, so... Uh... I'm quite partial to this bust, but I haven't painted it yet. It's one of the only Carol Riddick ones I haven't done. I'll tell you my biggest issue with it though is there's so many fucking wings and feathers. A lot of feathers. Get a iced fishing. Yeah, a lot of feathers there. I do like that figure. Let's put that on the maybe on the maybe list. Octavius. Uh, I haven't done lock and load. I'm I'm not not that big a fan of the figure. I don't know why, but something about her her pose just didn't work for me at all. Don't think I want to do any more Pedro Fernandez figures. Uh, he may get it in. He may... You, oh, hang on, you mean Sigrun? By the way, if you're not following Patry Miniatures on... on Instagram, I'll tell you what. She is awesome. G'day, Tathrol! The painting goes very well indeed. Patricia Sancho. This is a delightful figure that I am loving how she's going. This one. Um absolutely in love with this thus far from Patricia Sancho. Yep. So much so that I may even send her a message because that is just Trey Magnifique. Uh alright, I think yep, I think we'll call it with those ones. Alright, yes, this is what I was painting. Taitharal, this chap. I'm going to move on to this duel tonight. Alright. Oh, yeah, that one was sublime. Uh, these are these are Gauls.
He's got a strong jawline, this fella. Magnificent. I'll let you in on a little secret here, Bucks. This was the only figure that I actually saw out of the three before I pulled the trigger and bought them. It's like, yep, that'll do. That's enough. That's enough goodness. I shall have one of those. Thank you. Uh, I might just switch this camera over to manual so that it stops struggling so much. There we go. All right. Wow. Well. Are you referring to just the base or the whole thing is finished painting? Jesus. What was the end verdict on Sculpey, mate? The, the one attribute that you, that you can't get over yep, is that is that time just the time pressure disappears and you can you can leave something and be like yeah I don't feel like I've achieved what I want to achieve yet I'm going to go back in and add some more clay or just just yes yeah, switch a few bits and pieces around.
So this uh, this sculpt would be a really good sculpt for a class, I think. If I was going to do another class soon, I'd very strongly consider this sculpt from FER Miniatures for my class. The face has got fantastic detail. We've got a good amount of different textures. Yeah. Would be delightful for a class. So I rewatched season, episodes one and two of the Wheel of Time. About to rewatch episode three, probably on uh, probably Wednesday night actually. Uh, yeah, and my verdict is that I like it. It's a good show. Wow, you can really dance. Wow, you can really dance. What a coincidence. no real plan for what to do on the rest of this chap so happy to take some suggestions here on what we're going to do with his um, fur, what we're going to do with his be cool to do some interesting detailed fur maybe off of a specific animal Uh, yeah, it's, it's something I've been mulling over. Um, so I think this particular piece with these three chaps, it makes sense for them to be quite individualistic. They weren't like a regimented force like, like the Romans, they didn't have you know, platoons and troops and uniforms, they were all just individual tribes doing their thing. So I feel like it's okay if they um, don't tie together as much as, say, the, the Roman version of this would. Um, indeed, they are not 
So that's sort of the one school of thought. But then the second school of thought is that you know you want it to be a cohesive looking piece that tells a story. So there needs to probably be some uh, elements tying them together, and whether that's just like some some tattoos or something like that. That's, uh, that's the decision that point that we're at now. Um, how do we tie everything together without necessarily tie it all together? That's why I didn't want to finish off on the other guy yet because you can't be finished until you've done this chap. Yeah. A bit harder to do a tattoo on this friend. No, no quality area jumps out as a tattoo's spot, really, does it? Well, when am I not feeling adventurous, mate? So I'm using a colour I haven't used an awful lot uh, in this particular paint job. I'm using a colour called Basic Skin Tone from Model Colour. I don't really use it that much, but I thought I'd give it a try. G'day Alex MF, what's happening? So I actually think Vercingetorix, Vercingetorix, however you pronounce it, old Rexy, I think he was actually quite young. Oh, good luck mate, good luck for the promotion exam. So I don't want to do, I don't want to do grey hair um, for this dude. So I think we will go with the red, the orange hair. Uh, sure, mate. It's not that I don't I don't give feedback on a work in progress. What I don't do is give multiple feedbacks. You get one feedback per piece, and I also don't think that you'll learn as much getting feedback on a 
work in progress piece because all that happens is you then follow the directions of the painter whereas if you do something by yourself and you then make some mistakes and then you get feedback at the end you can learn about a variety of things but anyway proceed Can I assume that you'll be sending the photo to me at some point as well? Crazy. This Japanese method sucks toxins out of your body. Yeah, very cool, mate. Um, the lighting's sort of nice and subtle. Ooh. Uh, works really well from this this range. Um, the front part here is a little bit out of focus, so I can't tell if that's as nice as the rest of it but yeah I like this this sort of staircase uh, the lava effects looks really good um, looks like you've got a droplet of something from the, the sword there which is mad uh, the candles look good yeah just really nicely done um, my only observation uh, I like blue and orange as a color palette uh, I like a lot of things about this. Uh, the base may overpower the figure a little bit because this right here, this sword is the highest value area and so what I tend to do is look at the sword and then the direction it's facing is down so that makes me want to look down and see all this interesting stuff here whereas ideally you want to be looking at the face so you could you could work on that by doing some glowing eyes in the same colour as um, the sword. Um, maybe make the hair, the fire on his head up there as well. But yeah, it's um it's a really promising start, mate. Yeah. Yeah, cool. Super cool. I won't pop. Again, mate, this is why I don't like giving uh, giving feedback during work in progress. Your vision might be slightly different to how I see things and you know, that advice might not have been very helpful for what you were trying to achieve. Excellent, yes. Uh, how did you enjoy them, Wampa? Did you enjoy the first two episodes?
interesting. Uh, the scene with the uh, knife at the throat. Mm, okay. Um, yeah, look, I, I I spoke about this a fair bit on on my stream yesterday. Um, I'm really into this uh, series, so I'm very uh, nervous that they're going to get halfway through and then stop doing it. Haha, <laughs> Crumpasaurus Rex, thanks, champion. Uh, Practice, 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 my friend. Um, because I think the story really hits its straps in into a show that will that will work for television anyway. Um, a little bit later on in the series, the the book series is very much. A, a stereotypical, archetypical fantasy story, you know, Lord of the Rings esque, wise mentor, farm people leave on a quest, prophesized savior, etc., etc. Whereas Game of Thrones is is a bit more about a political drama and yeah. So, I just hope that the show gets enough time to spread its wings, and it's a really positive sign that they've got um, second season already. Um, yeah, so, I feel like the casting of Moiraine is outstanding. She's doing a perfect job. Uh, yeah, it's just all round really promising start yep cast are, cast are excellent really excellent the only one who I'm ambivalent towards at the moment is Matt and I think part of that is knowing that he's been recast making me ambivalent towards him. Okay, space toy. What's happening, champion? Uh, yeah, I felt like he... He hit his straps a little bit in the third episode, which you'll see. Go with an orangey colour instead of um, peanut butter for this bit. Uh, I know you've seen episode two, so I'm quite happy to talk about this. But the intro to episode two with the white cloaks, so good. Ah yes, Ted Lasso. Can I tell you, I finally convinced someone in my normal life to watch that show. And I was finally able to talk to someone about Ted Lasso, and it made my week. Rectum, yes, he's back. We missed you, champion.
mate, living the absolute fucking dream over here. Just could not be kicking more goals if I tried, honestly. It's a magnificent time to be alive, friends, when it comes to television. Wheel of Time, Lord of the Rings. Wonderful moments in televisual whatever. Long ago, ba -dum -boom, long ago, we form an etherin. Dum -dum. I know you're talking about me, and I'm comfortable with that. I'm an attractive man. Sometimes you just gotta own it. G'day, foolish monk. What's happening, friend? Uh, this is a historical space toy. This is from this trio. Of which I already finished one. Which I will show off in a brief moment. So here's his friend. I think we'll go for a Merida style, as in Merida from Brave. Look a bit like Sting. One of the golden rules of miniature painting is, particularly if you're a, a novice miniature painter, one of the golden rules is always try and dress the model from the inside out. What does that mean? Well, don't know. Great, great question. Thank you for asking. What it means is you should always try and start with the most recessed surface possible. And in the majority of cases, that most recessed surface will be the armour. Not the armour, the skin. The skin. Ignore what I said about the armour. I was thinking about the armour as I was talking. So that's why I've started with the skin on this figure, because it's the most recessed section. And then you dress the model from there up. And the reason that is the preferred method of painting is you are much less likely to ruin previous work by building your way up. working your way down, it's much harder. There you go, fun fact for the day. If you're a novice, if you're an expert, you probably already knew that.
deux. Hey, that's all right. Good job, mate. Yeah, I think you mentioned it last time, but that's all good. You're enthusiastic and proud of your achievement. Something you should should be crowing from the rooftops. It's, um, yeah. My first event, I did not place... Well, my first event overseas. Monty. Good luck, champion. The very worst you'll achieve out of it is you'll stretch yourself and improve yourself. Your actual performance in the event itself is the least relevant and least important part. It's all about pushing yourself to be a bit better. That's what I and all of the other shit painters tell ourselves that it's about. Whereas the people who win medals, they're always up there like, yeah, it's just about winning medals, guys. Sorry. Colour this tenebrous grey. Haha, <laughs> and there. Yeah. I've seen this stuff close up on a number of occasions. Just makes you sick, doesn't it? Sick in the pit of your stomach. Fuck you, Andy. <laughs> oh shit, I just remembered. I got some models today. I got my deer guard models and I left them in the car. That was a bit dumb. I was going to show them off on my stream. Well, maybe I'll go and get them and have a short intermission. But quickly we're going to do some wet in wet fur blending because we can. Get it, Rumble. What's going on? Maybe a bit wet in wet there, you know. living the dream so many of us wish we were living mate being able to watch twitch whilst at work Hmm. <laughs> 
hopefully I can be entertaining enough to help you avoid concentrating on your employment. And if that is not the case, then I apologise. But know that I've tried my best. Now I can dig this fur actually. This is some some reasonably done fur. Compared to the other guy, the fur was not my favourite. We are actually going to do some non-metallic metal on old mate, or not non-metallic metal, proper metallic metal, true metallics on tonight's show. Something we've not done in a long time. Uh, it's a technique I've not heard in a long time. I don't seem to remember ever owning a droid. on karaoke session. <laughs> Could you imagine that? You'll all have to tee it up for Christmas or something where everyone just racks up their points and you just force me to sing for a three hour stream. That'd be quite amusing really, wouldn't it? Yeah. This is all I'm asking for. Hi, Bunny. I just want you for my own. More than you could ever know. And make my wish come true. Maybe all I want for Christmas. This karaoke stream. Ooh. Karaoke. Carrie, are you okay? Are you okay? Are you okay, Carrie? Ah, uh, yes. I've met Byron. Seems like a stellar dude. Close, Conrad. <laughs> yeah, we're gonna we're gonna do some contrast paints, my friend. So that tends to shape the colour in a different direction. But yeah, start start with something interesting, a bit of cold and warm. And then the contrast paint will change that up a fair bit. I'm going to let you in on a secret of my favourite colour for orange hair. Whew. Mars Orange from Scale. This colour, it just pops. It just pops off the model. It's not the last step, but it's very, very, very good colour for orange hair. And have you tried them out yet, mate? Pro acrylics and the 
any brushes and so forth. Yeah, yeah, that's a uh, so particularly uh, effective approach. It's how I've done most of the reds that you've seen on uh, my f underlit red models. I use the fluorescent red mixed in with normal red. It certainly gives your colours some get up and go. There's a lot of um, there's a lot of potential in combining fluorescent colours with normal paints. However, in the words of Uncle Ben, who I'm really hopeful we'll get to see on screen again soon, Spider-Man. Uh, with great power comes great responsibility, and it it, it applies a saturation which is why I'm using this quote. When you have extremely powerful, intense colours, um, you've got to be careful how you use them because they can very quickly overpower a figure. You can apply contrast paints through an airbrush, you can do that in a couple of ways, you can just use them as a filter, or you can go a little thicker and it'll apply them in the same way that it would actually apply on, um, by using the brush. As long as it pumps out air, I think that's all that really matters, but... I trust you. If you think you need a new one, you probably do. Spend the money! So, 
We'll just do a little bit of tweaking now with some of those colours that I just used, which was Gore Grunter Fur and Cygore Brown. I'll actually just mix a smidge of those in with our highlight colour. So we get colour that feels about right. Doesn't look yellow anymore, Conrad, does it? Yes, yes indeed, for me anyway, for this figure, but we'll see, we'll see how they look together. I may have gone too warm on the colour palette for this one compared to the other ones. Again, something we'll need to evaluate. Remember how I was talking about my rule of dress the model from the inside out? It's always good to know the rules and it's always good to know when to break the rules. In this instance, the next thing I should have painted is the cloak and then do the fur, but it should be relatively easy to do the cloak. That should be fun. Do you remember the way we first started? Changes our lives away. Party on, party till September. Party on. Yeah, that's probably uh, probably not conscious. Um, just a couple of nice reddish tones that I like under my uh, under my main colours, I think. Why have I been doing that? Yep, not sure. Not sure. <laughs> Indeed. I'm probably not going to need to do too much airbrushing on the cloak. I will, I think, do some. But that's an easy-ish uh, element to airbrush. I've committed to doing a model without an airbrush on stream at some point. So the reason I like doing the approach that I've just done on this fur and to give you the, the quick rundown, that was some wet in wet 
blending of colours on the on the fur, followed by some contrast paint, followed by some, some brush strokes. I just feel like it really gives you um, natural variation. It's a hard thing to, to paint. Our, our default, our instinct is to just want things to be balanced and in harmony and when you when you try to replicate that it's just it's just so hard to achieve a convincing result so by taking the uh, the first steps and basically just throwing them out there and going cool let's see what it happens you're left with a much more dynamic result that you can then lean into natural things that appear you don't need to try and trick your brain into being like, yeah, this is this is how I'm going to roll. Because it's already out there on the figure. This Mars orange is just a really good colour for hair. I don't know why, something about the way that it that it goes on just makes me believe that it's a a natural hair tone. G'day Esmeralda, what's happening? Oof. It's uh, jeepers, I think it's about 25 degrees here in Brisbane. Uh, I'm struggling with my tie and my collared, collared shirt. It's, uh, it's an outrageous get up for a Monday evening. So I talked about this a little bit uh, with my friend Bucks yesterday. <laughs> it's too hot for everyone. And it's just not even the middle of summer yet. Uh, I finished Black Sails. I finished Black Sails, a television show, for the first time yesterday. I've never watched it before. It's always been on my to-do list. Finally finished watching it. Really enjoyed it. If you didn't watch Black Sails when it first came out, it very much stands the test of time, uh, culturally uh, appropriate and um, yeah, just enough history to keep you intrigued in uh, that period of time, 
but not so much that it gets bogged down in the seriousness of it all. <laughs> Welcome anytime, mate. Got a spare room, you can come hang out at Big Denos, come do some painting, have a chat. My wonderful girlfriend and I, we travel pretty much every year we were able to travel. We travelled in the December, November to December months because of that reason. The cold is such a, a change for us to travel overseas and experience. Um, thank you, Esmeralda. The cold is awesome. GW987, thank you, mate. So we're gonna add, we're gonna re-add some orange saturation back into this color because this yellow is really washing it out a fair bit. But before we do that, we are gonna crank it up, crank up the contrast. Let's crank up the contrast along with the bass. Came here tonight to hear the crowd go boom, shake, shake, shake the room. Boom, shake, shake, shake the room. Boom, shake, shake, shake the room. Tick, 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 boom! Let's just compare the two actually. Let's have a look at the two side by side. I was a bit worried about the skin tones. Uh, this guy's a little bit greenish, um, but that's probably okay. We can we can work on that uh, a little bit. Okay. <laughs> What's the matter with you? Well, Frog Jim, allow me to answer that by clicking a single button, and there it is. They're going to all be on the same base, Plinty Baby, like so. Should be good, hopefully. <laughs> I'll be able to put them on there actually and check out the placements and stuff. Uh, yeah, you know what? I might actually do that now. You do. You do need to think about light placement on all three. Need to have a, a genuine uh, understanding of what you are trying to achieve with all three of the figures together.
Yeah, I don't like the dog. I think the dog figure sucks. So we're gonna we're gonna drop um, each of these pretty much flush to the base, um, particularly this one. He's gonna be low, and then um, I think this one will keep him about that height, and this one will bring down a little bit more. So we're gonna have like three tiers um, on those uh, figures. So that should look okay. Yeah, should look okay. have to tweak their actual spot on placement but yep cool all right um i don't think the skin tones are too um too much out of the ballpark uh, just makes me feel like i probably need to tweak a little bit on this one anyway conversation for another day in you go buddy Come, buddy. <laughs> he does indeed have some severed heads, pretty good severed heads, too. Gonna be good fun to paint those. Looking forward to it. Working nine to five, what a way to make a living. Let's go with some ivory. There you go. So, technically, I wonder if it's even, because these are Gauls, not, um, not Scots or Celts, who would have been famous for their patterns, be it plaid or 
otherwise. This is a criticism I've given uh, a couple of people recently about painting hair. It's literally one of the most reflective uh, surfaces we have. And I sometimes think people don't go far enough in getting their hair really popping. Don't worry, Big Daddy doesn't have that problem. I'm going to take it way too far, and we're going to bring it back. Bring it all back to you. Dream of falling in love, everything you've been thinking of. When the world seems to get too tough, bring it all back to you. Na 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 uh, this, no, this chap's not Celtic. This chap's Gaul. Mm, there you go. Good fact, mate. Appreciate that. So, yeah, yep, absolutely spot on. This dude is actually in some Asterix comics, I believe. His name is Vercingetorix. I believe he's actually participated in some Asterix comics. So when you take your hair up this high, in terms of value, you get this very, very weird looking uh, effect, where you have all of these light placements, but there shouldn't be that much uh, light probably happening. But we're going to tweak that now. I'm going to tweak it with this colour, soul yellow, and you know what, just because someone talked about it before, literally just because of that, I'm actually going to add some fluorescent yellow. Dana, what are you doing? I didn't have fluorescent yellow hair. I know. We're creating a very powerful, intense orange. It's going to do. delightful glazes of this colour. Yeah, Vesingatorix was a real he was a real thorn in the side. Caesar I think eventually defeated him but it was a long campaign.
what you're getting when you do it this way, my way, my approach, uh, is you're getting the value right so that your hair looks really a different material to some of the other elements that you have on the figure. But you're not losing uh, intensity of colour by going up to white. And this approach works with many things. Same approach I use for getting really powerful reds. And we can do a little bit of airbrush tweaking on that if we want. A little bit later on, which maybe we will, maybe we won't. We'll decide another time. All right, zoom in. Not bad, not bad. Let's tweak this skin tone a bit. He does a bit, doesn't he?
G'day Benny, what's going on champion? Just enamoured with painting this face at the moment. So I have some regrets with the colour I selected for the highlight colour for this. It's a little bit uh, difficult because I'm not used to using it so I don't really understand how it works. Uh, yeah, well, it hasn't arrived yet, but um, yes, Fernando has graciously uh, uh, popped another one in the mail for me already, so hopefully it should arrive in the next few weeks. So yeah, I reckon I'm going to do everything but that arm on that guy. I reckon I can replicate his skin tone pretty con convincingly. When the arm eventually turns up. Mate, I've been there many times. I was there uh, just before COVID, November 19. I was in the beautiful London. The year before that, my girlfriend and I did a road trip from Edinburgh down through uh, York and Stopped at Nottingham, did the Warhammer World Tour. It was awesome. Okay, Chris. <laughs> Sorry, mate. Well, I'm sure yours will be significantly better than mine, mate. I have absolutely no doubt about that. However, mine will be finished before yours. That is a fact.
I'm doing well, champion. <laughs> yep. Well, look, mate, I hate to tell you this. I hate to be the guy, but I started this one yesterday. <laughs> Hello, friend. Hello. Notice paint quick of the crispy. Yes, let's. Fuck that guy. <laughs> Yours will be better. And what's really more important, mate, that you're paying 50 display models a year, or that you're paying five, but they're really good. And the great thing about this hobby is that everyone can have their own answer to that question. However, if your answer is not 50 display models, you're wrong. Alright, I believe I'm going to put this chap down for tonight. Might be time to do some metallic colours. It's been a long, long while, but I agreed that I was going to paint true metallics. Whew. That's a big ask, mate. I have no doubt that would doubt dent anyone's mojo. Well done. Okay, so we're gonna need to grab some metallic colours here. <laughs> I keep them in a separate container because I haven't used them in so fucking long. gonna only really need to use two two colors thank you Chris P uh, it's my privilege and pleasure sir I use two colors for my metallics it's these two colors black metal from scale color and steel from model air this color is the ducks nuts I don't often talk about colours being the duck's nuts. That is one that I will quite happily award that moniker. This colour is the foundation of pretty much every metallic surface that I've painted in a long while. <laughs> the the chat voted and we're doing true metallic metal. So let us commence. What I'm going to try and do though is I'm going to try and learn while we're doing. And I'm going to try and do true metallic metals in a non metallic metal style. Potentially, if we can.
This, uh, this color is a really interesting color from scale and it sort of breaks one of the fundamental concepts about non-metallic metal, or sorry, true metallics. Uh, it's, it's weird because when you, when you paint with metallics, what you're trying to achieve is the shine, right? Like that's what, you, that's what you're trying to get, is this shiny reflective surface. Well, this scale color is not a color that will give you a super ultra shiny surface. It's actually like a scale fantasy color sorry, scale 75 color, it's, it's kind of a bit matte. And that is actually its strength and why I use it as a base coat for all of my metallic sections. We'll talk more, we'll talk more. The first thing we're gonna do is just lay down these base colors, my highlights, if you will. In the same way that we do when we're doing non-metallic metal, You know, I actually recorded a, uh, a YouTube video on painting true metallics and then I never got around to editing it together. I did it on a chick that, um, yeah, I think I sent her away. Yeah, I sent it to someone. I don't remember who. I think I told her to finish it. So what you're trying to achieve with true metallics and with any form of painting that you're doing is, if you can guess what word I'm going to say, contrast. And so when we talk about contrast, we so often just think about value contrast, the shift between light and dark. And it's very true that that is usually an area where most people need to improve. However, another type of contrast that exists is a contrast between the reflectiveness of a surface, whether that's dull or whether that is uh, super reflective. So when we're coming in here doing what I'm doing now, what I'm actually trying to create is a surface that is not quite reflective yet. We will get there eventually, but our intent is not to be reflective now. Our intent is to be uh, somewhat reflective. so that it's clear what, what type of surface we're dealing with, but not as reflective as some other areas. And we'll, we'll I'll lean more into this approach as we, as we continue. G'day Rapid Transit, what's happening mate?
Yeah, by my count, it'd probably be about 3 a.m. for you, wouldn't it? Four, there you go. Okay, and now we're gonna lay in some environmental colors. Now, this is another one of those moments where I just, I love the fuck out of contrast paints. I just, I dig them. I really dig them. I use them all the fucking time. I think they're a banger. So I've got some Creed camo because we had a lot of green. I do like painting true metallics. I really should do it more. Space Wolves Grey. And then we'll add some, ah, Nicky Jags. Dark, saturated browns. Yeah, I'll tell you what, man. It's a good call. Uh, I'm really excited about the new Chimera paints um, because I think they are going to be what we're looking for. I've had the same problem. So much so that this is the only Games Workshop colour that I have that isn't a technical paint or a contrast paint. Love a broken TV, hey? Uh, probably... There's some good scale fantasy range, but they're not. They don't have the coverage of Rhinox Hive. Ah, good. Well, that's how they learn sometimes, mate, by making mistakes. I'm sure there's some relevance in our real life situations we could draw upon that would Add context and colour to that statement, but we shan't. We shan't.
Well, it's as good a reason as any, isn't it? Yeah, I, I really like the look of, um, they've got two, two browns in there that look absolutely mint, that I'm quite keen on, uh, on giving a crack. I don't want this guy to be taking up too much of the uh, of the focus, my friend. He's just a little ancillary character in the real story, the real hero of the story, which is Muscatorix. So my final step that I'm going to do is I'm actually going to add some. Signal blue, and I mix that in with some this is just tenebrous grey, which will do instead of black for the moment. Now we're just going to add some sharp shadows. So what we've got here is a surface that has some reflectiveness to it, but it doesn't look like metal yet. It certainly doesn't look like uh, the normal paints, because it's got this glint when you turn it around, and I think probably actually one of the best things about doing this on stream is you can actually turn it around and people can see you know, how, it, how it glints. All right, great. So let's assume that Big Dano is finished with all of this and I've gone out and done my varnish. So this is the stage I'm gonna use my, my spray can. I'm not gonna do that tonight because I have a lot of other areas to do first, but. So then the next stage that actually starts to bring things to life 
coming back in with this color with that steel adding some really shiny glinty bits into these areas So what you get is the transition from a matte, dull surface into this textured, popping, glinty surface. And this is this particular bit that I've just done is only uh, at about 20% efficacy of the steel colour. I've mixed it in heaps with this matte scale colour just to really uh, highlight the difference for my good friends that are watching on stream right now. Uh, no. No, I haven't used metallic blacks. So this is the pure steel. Nothing else mixed in it. Oh yeah. Um, no, I don't know that I've. I don't know that I've used those. One, I don't even know that I've seen those. I'm sure I've seen them, but I certainly haven't used them. And there it is. That is Big Deno's non-metallic metal using trim metallic metal paints. What a glorious and wondrous exercise it's been. I'm going to turn the uh, I'm going to turn the exposure down because I feel like it's still reflecting so much light 
that you're not really getting the true sense of it, so stand by. Pretty good actually. G'day War Machine. There you go. I, I, I don't know. It's fine. <laughs> it's fine. I feel like. I feel like I enjoy the effect of. Non-metallic metal more these days. Wonder why that is. Yeah, when is his hot tub stream? He he was on here before, but he's gone. He's not on now. this I enjoy this look at this it is water mate yeah just a little refreshing H2O ah, yep yeah. now I've had a beer for a while I've been too uh, been too stressed mate I know that sounds counterproductive but And she came out fucking awesome. Should do. Should do a full six pack stream. Six pack stream, we'll call it, on Christmas. Over Christmas, mate, I'll commit to a six pack stream. Let's do it. One six pack stream coming up. That's a good question, mate. I was a bit hesitant there to use my my good brand new brushes on the metallics for the self same reason as you just described there. But I do think it's time to bite the bullet and just do it. As long as you are willing and able to clean the brushes thoroughly after you finish. All right. Excited. Let's do this little. Uh, let's do this little fabric bit here. Then we might. We might call it a day. Actually.
wonder what colour will do, if any, patterns on this fabric. I think we should do some patterns of some description because it's a historical figure and historical chaps always have lots of patterns. Up until recently, Conrad, I was an absolute um, fiend for the uh, for the Windsor and Newton, but we couldn't get them for a while. They were just unavailable in Australia, so I ended up going for the uh, the Raphael eight four oh fours, and I've been pretty pretty pleased with them. Yep, you know, when when I first used them, I, I used them for the first time on stream, that was exactly the feedback I gave. I was like, well, no snap. No snap, no fire, no energy. <laughs> but I have become accustomed to that. I think I would prefer... Uh, Windsor and Newton if push came to shove, but we can't get them. Got to make do with what I can get. Hot, hot, hot! Come in! Come my man! Come in! Thanks, little machine! Come on, Ah, oh, thanks, Rapid Transit. I appreciate that. We're on fire tonight with subscriptions team. Three of the best. Appreciate it. Yeah, we're starting to descend on uh, on December, which will be <laughs> yeah, fair play, mate. I'll cop that. Yeah, as we come up to December. Uh, getting very close to 12 months of streaming. Wow. And I think we may try. And this is all very up in the air at the moment, so don't hold me to this, but we'll try. We may try and do a live stream from Crystal Dragon in Canberra. For my 12 month anniversary of streaming. It's a couple of days early but I think it'll be a good good way of uh, celebrating 12 months. Wampa, what can I sing for you mate? <laughs> um. Oh, you're gonna 
take me home tonight Oh, down beside that red firelight Oh, and you give it all you got Fat bottom girls, you make the rocking world go round I was just a skinny lad Never knew no good from bad But I knew lots before I Something, something, something Left alone with something, something Such a naughty nanny Hey big woman You got made a big man out of me Now get this Oh, I know Won't you take me home tonight Oh, down beside that red firelight Oh, and you give it all you got Fat bottom girls, you make the rocking world go round Get on your bikes and ride I want to ride my bicycle I want to ride my bike I want to ride my bicycle I want to ride it where I like Is it black? Is it white? Oh, don't believe it's Superman All I want to do is bicycle Bicycle I want to ride my bicycle a little bit of a Queen Mega Mix for you there, mate. She's a killer queen, Valentine's Day Queen. Dynamite with a laser beam, guaranteed to blow your mind. Anytime, insatiable in appetite. Wanna try? Avoids complications. She never kept the same address. Something, something. She looks like Marie Antoinette building a remedy. I don't remember the words, but da da da. Bam, bam. Ha! <laughs> to see a concert, wow. Um, do you know, I think. Because I'm not really, I'm not really a, a music guy, right? Like I, I, I have a lot of songs in my head, but I don't really consider myself a music buff. So I think I would want to bring like someone very famous from history, like Mozart or Bach or Ludwig von Beethoven, Schrien, thank you, someone like that, because. Yeah, I think that would be a, a fascinating experience. There's a really, there's a really great article, right? I, I, I told like five people about this article today for, for no discernible reason. Um, I just, I read it, I don't know, 10 years ago and it stuck with me. Anyway, this article is called Pearls Before Breakfast, and it was the Pulitzer winning uh, article, Pulitzer Prize winning article in 2007, 2008 maybe, and this, this article was done by the Washington Post, and the premise was, let's take a, a world-class violinist, like literally one of the best violinists in the world 
and let's put him in a subway station and see who stops. See what the experience is like for him and blah, blah, blah. So this, this article is called, yep, yeah, Pearls Before Breakfast. It's a beautifully written article. And I highly recommend having a read of it. If you have the chance. Uh, and yeah, the dude, the dude in it, he's playing a fucking three million dollar violin, a Stradivarius violin. He's playing this in a subway station, and he's playing uh, pieces that are that are widely considered to be some of the most difficult violin pieces to play in the world. And he's just giving it an absolute red hot crack in this subway station, just going hammer and tong throwing himself around the shop you know, just, just to see if he could make an impact on people's daily lives and the way that they commute and make people stop and listen to, sure, Nick Jaguar, one of the finest uh, classical musicians of our era. We're all waiting with bated breath, Nicky Jakes. What do you got for us? I, I did, didn't feel the need to go that low very often, Wampa, with the Winsor and Newtons. Generally the zero was enough. Right. That is crazy. Jeffrey, Jeffrey Bezos. Roman Groover gave me a very good piece of advice one time. Uh about brushes because he'd, he'd been talking to Meg Meg Naples and Meg was vehemently saying you should always use the largest brush you can because it keeps more pain in the well absolutely true statement factual statement incontrovertible fact and Gruber was said to me fuck that <laughs> said why is this obsession with 
big brushes, big brushes, fuck big brushes. Use whatever brush you feel comfortable with. That's a small brush, use a fucking small brush. It's a big brush, use a fucking big brush. It's all okay. So maybe give the uh, small one a try, mate. Might work out for you. That's an almost verbatim conversation, by the way. <laughs> Alright, friends, I'm putting this chap, these two chaps off to the side. Let's find some glorious human that we can raid. We're not back on Wednesday night, friends, because, in fact, on Wednesday night, I'm streaming for Word Miniatures. So you'll be able to catch me over there on Word Miniatures. Um, yeah. Worth having a bow peep. Let's see who's out and about. Yeah, have a great Thanksgiving. Have a great whatever day that falls on for everyone else. Oh, CHK's on. Maybe we should raise CHK. I haven't seen him for a while. Stiller. I haven't raided Stiller for a while. Ah, oh, Mittens is on. What's it? How many hours has Mittens been on for? Five hours. She's a fucking nutcase. Fuck, Mittens. Can't believe she's been going for five hours. Who's got that much stamina? That's impressive. Let's see if there's anyone who we haven't seen yet. In bad taste, an Aussie. Hello, someone who just did something. Thank you. Uh, what are you doing, mate? My camera's on site, by the way. My camera. It's not on site. Oh, says live. She's a fucking oh, legend. Yeah. What's this guy doing? He's painting Radicar the Wolf. Let's raid this guy in bad taste. Never seen him on before. Love an Aussie. Love an Aussie. All right, friends. You're wonderful. Can you hear me? Hello. Hey. Yeah. Hello. Oh, legends. We're about to go and have a, have a bow peep at some. Uh... I thought I wouldn't leave you alone. Okay. <laughs> Just fun. Oh. Oh, so you got the phone down to your head. No, I'm having a smoke and it's down Thanks, Tatheral. Oh, okay. Tatheral. Yeah. Tatheral, Tatheral. <laughs> Whatever will be, will be. Oh. Let's go, friends. See you on uh, Wednesday if you're on Word. Otherwise, back on Sunday. Big dinner. Oh, yeah, I'll probably get on the page. Partners. Hey, what the fuck? What's going on? Big Dino yeah. raiding with 36 people. How's it going, everybody? <laughs> fuck, it's good. Like, I just got raided. 36 people. What's going on? Um, raiding. Uh,